Hey, what up? This is Third Degree. Um, I no longer have thirdstop.com, the forum. Um, I didn't have enough time in my life to kind of keep up with that. So that's been gone. I still have the domain name, so I may do something with it in the future. But for now, that's gone, just to let you know. And it's been gone for a while if you haven't figured it out. Uh, second of all, I'm going to have a lengthy intro, so if you feel like I'm wasting your time... Don't feel the need to come on it. Just fast forward it or skip to another video. I really could care less if I'm wasting your, your YouTube, precious YouTube time. But uh, today I'm going to focus on uh, something I find to be very critical with uh, sample-based music, especially when you chop up your samples and rearrange, and that's tempo. Now on the surface, tempo seems to be pretty simple. Just set the tempo to what fits your sample. But you can really kind of tweak it, even slightly, and get it to sound a lot more natural with your drums. So, um, like DJ Premier, for example, I always hear people saying, uh, you know, Primo is one of the best because of his DJing background. But, uh, you know, that's true. And um, But, you know, realize that you can use a lot of what you hear in your own music. So... Primo actually is, uh, despite a bunch of other dope shit he does, one of the biggest uh, things that I find to be characteristic of his music is his drums. The tempo of his drums compared to the tempo of his sample is usually a lot slower than other producers, so sometimes it feels like it's almost dragging a little bit, but it really puts his drums up front um, probably more so than any of the equipment he uses. And uh, so he's a great example of, of how to use tempo to actually define your style, not just change the tempo of your song to make it faster or slower for a rapper. And so, so just to start off, I'm using Reason 4.0. I chopped all my samples up and recycle, and I've already made this beat. Um, you can do this on any sequencer, sampler, like... You know, Reason, Fruity Loops, MPCs, ASR10s, anything that has a sequencer, and you can sample into it. And again, it's just, it's, I find this to be more crucial when you chop up your samples rather than when you have a loop. So, you have two basic things. You have the tempo of the sample, and I don't use time stretch, and if I speed up the tempo in Reason or slow it down, it doesn't adjust the sample pitch, length, or anything. So... Basically, if I slow my sample down in half, it'll be all choppy. And if I speed it up, it'll be all choppy in a different way. So I'm going to play this sample with the drums muted at uh, 92 beats per minute. On this particular sample, that seems to be where it sounds like it's um, the correct tempo. Or more or less the correct tempo. So I'm going to play the song real quick. <laughs> so you see it has no gaps. I'm going to set it down to 91. Now I'm just slowly slowing it down. So I slowed it down to 85 at the end. I'm going to bring it back up to 92. And it seems like it's kind of dragging. But now I'm going to unmute the drums. And I raised the level of the drums up so you could hear it better. My drums usually aren't this loud. But here it is at 92. And I'm just going to slowly slow it down. And you can kind of feel how it kind of hits a natural place. So once you got your sample arranged, even your whole beat done, play with the tempo a little bit and see... Uh, how it sounds with your swing and everything and just kind of find the tempo that feels the most natural so
Now, there's nothing really wrong with that, but watch when I start slowing the tempo down. The drums, to me, seem a little hectic. They seem a little bit too energetic, and it just seems to kind of not mesh quite right. So I'm going to slow the tempo down. So I'm back up to 92, and I'm going to slowly start slowing the tempo down so you can kind of hear this. So I decided to to do 86 and to me that the drums I'll play it again at 86 and then I'll have it just jump up back to 92 I feel like the drums mesh and then all of a sudden you speed it up and the drums get a little hectic without doing anything else but changing the tempo so here it is at 86 I'm going to speed it up to 92 where I started at. Now when you go slower, it's kind of hard to see and hear. But once you uh, speed it up, it's a lot easier to see. Okay, I liked it a lot better at the slower tempo. So I tend to always slow my beats down from where my sample really meshes at least two beats per minute up to five or six, you know. So um, anyways, I know this is real simple, but I really feel like the need to explain it because I try to tell people this day in, day out, and they always are like, well, I just do this, this, and this, and I still can't get my drum sounding right. So, and I want my drums to sound like this or sound like this. And, you know, you got to realize that this is a critical aspect of beat making, regardless of how simple something is, that doesn't mean that it should be easy or easy to overlook, you know, and just trying to make it as understandable to you as possible. That's why I'm being so thorough on something I could show you in literally 10 seconds if uh, I didn't care to explain it. So hopefully this helps you out. Get your drums really knocking and shit. Because when you slow it down, your drums tend to kind of peak out a little bit. So, uh, yeah, anyways. So, anyways, I don't know how many of these tutorials I'll continue to do. But, uh, hopefully I help you out a little bit right here. Alright, thank you. Third degree.